All right, let's take a look at the homework for tutorial 15. My task for you was to get this code here to compile properly. So if you compile it, um, what you're going to get is you're going to get some errors. No callable begin, no callable end found for stack. And that should be a big clue as to what you should be doing here. So obviously, when we use a range-based for loop, the way it gets the range out of the container is it calls begin and end. So range-based for loops use iterators. They work on iterators. Um, so we need to add a begin and an end to get some iterators. So you say, okay, well, let's, let's add a begin and an end. So we go into stack.h, and uh, we look through here and we say, well, we could add a begin and an end. It's got to return an iterator. Uh, and you could say, well, maybe I'll just return a pointer and because pointers work like iterators, right? So if I just re return a simple pointer, that could work, except it won't work. A simple pointer will work if your data type is contiguous in memory. Uh, but this is a linked list. It's not contiguous. The uh, elements could be all over the place and they point to each other with uh, pointers. So we have to have a smarter iterator that knows how to follow the, the element pointers, the, uh, the p-nexts. So we have to create our own iterator class and return it with our uh, begin and end functions. Now, it turns out that the range-based for loop only requires a super minimal implementation of an iterator. And that's all I've done here. So uh, I've created iterator here. You can have default constructor. You can construct it with a pointer to an element. And you've got the pre-increment operator, which just follows the next pointer and you know returns a reference to the iterator object. You've got the dereferencing operator, which returns a reference to the int that is stored in the element. Uh, and you have got the not equals operator. This is what the range-based for loop uses to determine when you've reached the end of the range. And returns a bool, obviously just compares if the, the, the current pointer element is not equal to the uh, the parameter one the one on the right hand side of the not equals and then you've got one piece of private data here payload and that is the pointer to the current element that the iterator is pointing to and there you go you've got your iterator now all you got to do is you got to get a begin and end and begin is just going to return an iterator that points to the top of the stack and end well, the thing is, you've got to determine what value uh, should an end iterator have. Because for an iterator over an array of contiguous memory, the end iterator points to the memory location directly after the last element. Uh, but a linked list is a little different. So for a linked list, you're going to have elements pointing to another element, pointing to another element, and at the very end, the last element is going to point to null pointer. Uh, so what we should do is, well, we should also make our end iterator have a uh, value of pointing to null pointer. So all I do is, well, because the iterator defaults to null pointer here at the default constructor, all I've got to do is just uh, default construct an iterator when I want an end iterator. And there you go. So now we've got begin, we've got end, and this should allow our stuff to run properly. And if it does, there you go. Your shit is working. All this does here is it uh, uses the iterator to modify all the elements in the container and then to print them out. Now, level two is a little more complicated the same idea as here, only this time I'm using a, uh, a constant reference to the stack to work with. And so now I'm using constant reference and I'm trying to use that constant reference to modify the sequence. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not actually modifying them, but I'm getting a non-constant uh, reference. And it's not going to like this. Why is it not going to like this? Well, begin and end are... Uh, they're not constant functions, so you can't call them if you have a const reference, right? So this isn't going to work. And what a lot of people done, and this will get it to compile, is they'll just say, oh, well, I, I, can, I know this problem. All I got to do is make my begin and my end const. And here you go. That went away. It compiled. I'm a genius. Nah, this is actually the wrong answer. This is a trick. This was a trap, all right? Uh, you do not, re these begin and end should not be 
const member functions. Why is that? Well, if you return an iterator to the uh, the container, you've, you've given the person who's called begin, you've given them a way to modify the contents of the container. But if they had a const reference, they were not supposed to modify it. So doing this allows people to circumvent your const protection. It's it just basically defeats the entire purpose of using const in the first place. So this is the wrong answer. The correct answer, and if you had studied the uh, standard library, this would uh, be, maybe maybe this would have uh, came to mind for you, is you should have overloads of begin and end, like I mentioned in the video. So your overloads of begin and end are const, but they're not going to return an iterator. They're going to return a different type altogether called a const iterator. Just like I mentioned in the video for tutorial 15, you've got iterators and you've got const iterators. And const iterator, it does most of the same things as iterator, except for one little detail. And that is that when you dereference it, it returns a const reference, meaning you are not allowed to touch that shit. Uh, you can read, you cannot write. So by doing this, by providing overloads, now, if someone has a const reference to the container, they can still get an iterator to read it, but they can't write it. They can only get an iterator for writing if they have a non-const reference. And as you see, this compiles and runs, gives us the correct uh, result, just like the other way, only this way is correct, whereas the other way was wrong. And there you have it. There's what is needed to enable your own type to be used in a range-based for loop. Now, this is a super minimal implementation. So, like, let's say I try to do std advance. And um, let's go, let's see here, s.begin. And we'll try to advance s by 3. Uh, if I try to compile that, you're going to get an error because it's missing iterator category. Like remember when I told you in the video, iterator category is what the standard library uh, algorithm functions use to determine how they should work. So advance will work differently for a random access iterator than it'll work for a forward iterator, for example. So our iterator here, our very simple iterator implementation is missing some stuff to enable it to work with algorithms in the standard library. I'll put a link on the wiki page to an example of a more uh, complete iterator type. So this one is implementing forward iterator, uh, iterator and const iterator, uh, but it is, it is doing it in a way that will fulfill the requirements of the standard library algorithms. So you've got a bunch of type def defines that define the, uh, the type of the iterator as self-type, uh, the type of the thing that the iterator points to as the value type, reference type, pointer type, and also defines the uh, forward iterator tag. Iterator category uses type defs for all these things, giving them a uh, standard name that the algorithm can look into when it is working on the iterator. And it, you know, it implements the uh, the operations required for a forward iterator. Obviously, if you're going to implement a, something like a random access iterator, you're going to need a lot more operations than these. But this is a nice uh, starting point for you if you're interested. To be honest, it's not that often that you have to uh, implement your own custom iterators because generally you're not going to be creating your own containers. You're going to be using standard library containers or maybe some third-party containers. But if you ever uh, if you ever delve into that, if you ever find the requirement for it, this is how you would do that, and it's pretty cool shit, I think. So I wanted to show it off a little bit. Sometimes if you have your own class and maybe it has some data inside of it and you want to be able to range base four over the data. If the data is in something like a vector, you could just create begin and end that returns vector.begin and vector.end. So that's not too hard. Um, but yeah, usually you're not going to be creating your own custom iterator types. One more thing you could do with iterators uh, that I haven't touched on here but that is interesting is you could create an iterator wrapper. So it's not an iterator that comes out of a container but it is an iterator that uh, wraps around an existing container to give you a different view on the container. And one thing I was thinking of for homework but I didn't do was a circular iterator. And what a circular iterator would do is uh, if you incremented the iterator past the end of the container uh, or to the end of the container, it would wrap around to the beginning. So it would allow you to circularly uh, iterate through a container. And that might be useful in some situations. But um, yeah, 
I'm satisfied with what we did here, and I uh, just want to give a congratulations to those of you who figured out how to overload begin and end and return a different kind of iterator for a const container. Kudos for you guys, and uh, I will see you soon with some more C++.